Hello, this is Dr. Brian Wallum with RX Vitamins for Pets, and this webinar is Integrating Digestive Enzymes and Probiotics into Your Existing Protocols. Now, there are only two reasons animals get sick. And for an example, let's pretend this plant came walking into your office one day. When you look at this picture, what is the first thing you think? Now obviously the plant isn't completely dead, it's still green. But you're probably thinking, well, it needs water. And you could probably be correct. Also, perhaps the owner of the plant was on vacation and the cat that the owner has got mad that the owner was on vacation and peed in the plant all week long. Another possibility. So again, let's look at the two reasons any animal gets sick. They're either toxic with something, perhaps the cat peed in a plant, and or, and typically it's both, they're deficient in something. Somebody forgot to water the plant. So when we look at an animal, let's think in terms of biological terrain. And this is a term coined by Claude Bernard, uh, internal milieu, and it refers to the extracellular fluid environment and its physiological capability to ensure protective stability for the tissues and organs of multicellular living organisms. You, me, cats, dogs, rabbits, etc. And biological terrain, it, basically it's like in the plant, it's the soil, the soil of animal bodies. And how do we best help maintain optimum soil or internal milieu? And an integrative vet will look to improve the terrain. We want to stop the symptoms, of course, but we also want to improve the terrain of that animal so the animal and its cells function at their optimum. And the questions you ask are everything. Don't just diagnose, which is very important, but start to ask yourself, how did the animal in front of me get into this condition? What, what are the things that weaken the tissue to allow the terrain to change to create a disease process? And always remember that animal bodies, these, these bodies, yours, mine, cats, dogs, rabbits, etc., were, were made to be self-healing, self-regulating. And depending on physical stresses, getting enough exercise, chemical stresses, what's in the diet, emotional stresses. You know, the, the pet parent may come home every day and scream at Fluffy or Fido. Uh, how well the body functions is, it, it functions dependent on the level of these three stresses. And adaptive physiology, this is physiology at any given moment and it's based on genetic expression of the present environment. So again, whatever's happening in the environment will create genetic expression. And adaptive physiology is basically survival. But the main effects of long-term adaptive physiology to a stress environment are communication changes that happen between cells and actually inside the cell too. So in other words, there's a communication breakdown regarding how the cell tells itself to function and how it communicates with other cells around it. So where does the breakdown start? And usually it's diet. Now if you think about wild dogs and, and wolves, they eat an entire prey animal that they catch. They'll eat the viscera and organs first, eat the meat, skin and bones next, and typically those animals they catch, they feed mostly on grasses, nuts, berries, you know, rabbits are vegetarians, raccoons, skunks, foxes will eat nuts, berries, worms, they eat meat too, they're omnivores. But typically there's a lot more, it's easier to catch grass than it is to catch another prey animal if you're a raccoon or a skunk, etc. And diabetes, IBS, food allergies are virtually non-existent in the wild. And a poor diet it will change the intestinal environment. 
It'll actually change the pH, temperature, interstitial fluid makeup. It'll throw off glucose and insulin balance. Will create acid in the cells. Will clog villi and, and block absorption of food and nutrients. And will toxify the liver because the small intestine uh, nutrients from the small intestine and toxins go to the liver to be processed. Now the importance of enzymes. These things I'm sure you know, they speed up chemical reactions. Enzymes are very dependent on pH, temperature, and minerals. And amino acid uptake is very dependent on pH, enzyme function, growth hormone, and insulin. And in complete oxidation, the breaking down of food into carbon dioxide and water is dependent on pH, enzymes, oxygen, and minerals. So all of these things obviously work together. Now the importance of pH, especially when concerning the internal milieu, pH, a balance between hydrogen ions and hydroxyl ions, and everybody has their own pH. Stomach needs to be acid. Small intestine, we want alkaline. We want pancreatic secretion to be alkaline because digestive enzymes in particular must have an alkaline pH to activate properly. And the large intestine should be an acid pH, but often that gets skewed. So who likes what pH out there in the world of uh, little critters? Uh, yeast, molds, and fungus, they like more of an acid environment. Bacteria and, and viruses like more of an alkaline environment. And again, enzymes are pH dependent. And just a reminder, digestive enzymes in the small intestine need an alkaline pH to activate properly. Now, a little PS. Yeast loves the sugar from carbohydrates and we all have yeast molds, funguses, bacteria, viruses in us. But if we eat a carbohydrate laden diet like so many people and pets do, that will change the pH of the small intestine to more of an acid environment. Yeast loves an acid environment and it just feasts on uh, simple carbohydrates. So it, with your processed carbs, bacteria and yeast feed off of the simple sugars. Processed carbs promote an overgrowth of yeast and bacteria in the body because the pH is changed due to the diet. Processed carbs, they release sugars immediately. There's no step, step down or breakdown. Um, and you get an immediate glucose spice, spike, excuse me. And it, then these repeated glucose spikes create insulin resistant cells, which is a whole nother topic on its own. Now this is a, a picture of the interior of the intestine and the, the interior of the intestine has these little fingers and on the fingers there's microvilli or little hairs if you will. And this is where food gets, nutrients get ab absorbed as well as toxins. And this is a picture on the left is a healthy villi. You can see them all individual and, and on the right side the the little fingers are all clogged up. So undigested or processed food will clog the brush border, the little hairs, flatten out the microvilli, the finger, fingers, and then you'll get carbohydrates fermenting, fats going rancid, proteins will putrefy, and cell acids, the hydrogens in particular, start to build up. Well what's the problem with that? And this is what it is. If a cell starts becoming full of hydrogen, it starts to kick out potassium and chloride, which we urinate away. If the available chloride is decreased, then you have less possibility of hydrochloric acid, a very big step in animal digestion, a very, very big signaling uh, compound too. Uh, secretin is produced in response to potassium and hydrochloric acid. Now secretin tells the pancreas to dump out bicarbonate, a very alkaline substance, to help digest it and help activate enzymes in the small intestine. And if there's less bicarbonate then and there's less HCl, you're, you're going to have less fat breakdown, which we're going to show on the next slide because now you have less HCL, more undigested food, that's going to leak out of the gut. 
and now you've created leaky gut, intestinal permeability. Mast cells attack food particles and release histamine, because food particles shouldn't be in the blood. Also, CCK is secreted in response to HCL. Bile is secreted in response to cholecystokinin. So if you have less bile, now you have less fat emulsion, possible lipidosis, high cholesterol, and the immune system is exhausted from the leaky gut because food keeps getting leaked out into the bloodstream. So the immune system, instead of attacking viruses, bacteria, yeast molds, and fungus, is running around chasing undigested food and becoming exhausted. A little side note, it's kidneys need to be healthy to help detox and pH balancing because they eliminate most of the tissue acids from the body, especially carbon dioxide. So make sure you're doing things to help keep kidneys healthy. Uh, also, another clinical consideration, could some of your non-contact dermatitis or skin allergy patients be a yeast overload that's being pushed out through the skin? Because the skin is the obviously the largest organ of the body, and the body is smart enough to get, try and get rid of yeast anywhere it can, so it will push it out through the skin. So maybe those allergies are because of, again, asking the right question, a breakdown uh, in enzymatic function, digestive enzymes, which is creating the wrong pH, an acid environment for yeast to live in and proliferate. How small intestinal bacterial overgrowth happens. If the enzymes aren't activated, undigested proteins enter the large intestine from the small intestine, and the proteins rot. Now, unfriendly bacteria proliferate on the rotting protein, and then they sneak back into the small intestine through the ileocecal valve. So again, a, a, if digestive enzymes aren't functioning, they can be a piece of the SIBO puzzle. And solutions for SIBO. Get some digestive enzymes in the pet's food. Also use a probiotic because probiotics will take up the landing sites of unfriendly bacteria, then the unfriendly bacteria can be eliminated. So basically your chain of events, inappropriate diet, will change pH, impair enzyme function, irritable bowel, leads to leaky gut, leads to dysbiosis, leads to overworked immune system, and then you can just keep putting the problems or symptoms that after this list. So the four R's of certainly bowel repair. Remove toxins, pathogens, antigens. Repair disrupted GI mucosa. Replace digestive factors. And re-inoculate bowel flora. And the big picture, change the diet if at all possible. And I know this can be very difficult with pet parents. But if you can do it, great. And I, again, I know it's difficult. Use nutrition to heal the bowel wall inflammation. Use digestive enzymes to help break down even a poor diet and use probiotics. Now, Rx uh, vitamins for pets, we have the R, our Rx Zyme digestive enzyme formula with seven enzymes. It will help improve GI ecology. It's in a powder form. You just sprinkle a bit on the food and it helps promote food absorption. Our probiotic formula has four probiotic strains, a couple of prebiotics, hypoallergenic, and this will help normalize GI function and restore proper intestinal flora. And our bowel healer, our Nutrigest, this has got some pre and probiotic in it, but it also has these, the bowel healers, glutamine, ginger, aloe, garlic, deglycerized licorice, and this will help to restore mucosal epithelial cell function. Remember, RX vitamins for pets are sold exclusively to veterinarians. Uh, thank you for listening. If you have any questions, visit any spot on the website or call me on my cell. And uh, again, thank you for enjoying this webinar.